It was important that to conclude this part of the story, we had to go off the base. <laughs> oh. I think it's a lot of self-discovery for yes. both Caitlin and Fraser. We wanted to give Fraser and Caitlin uh, the possibility of real freedom, like for one night we're gonna be exactly who we want to be. <laughs> It's almost like a dream. It's an escape, but it's also, it's almost like a dream. And I think that when, when you tell stories about that particular age, uh, you, you have to remember that you need to dream and leave space for, for dreams and visions and just this urgency to escape everything sometimes. I think that Caitlin learns the very harsh lesson that the identity is constantly shifting. I think she understands in that moment with great sorrow that she probably doesn't want to be what she thought she wanted to be. But in this sense of defeat that she feels, she also finds something revelatory, something uh, painfully beautiful. And that's what is the trigger of her confusion, rage, sadness in the bathroom. In practice, she's understanding the real need of utopia for the self, to be recognized in the gaze of the other. Both Caitlin and Fraser and their friends, they belong to a generation who often just sails through these possible definitions and doesn't really stop their thinking what the right definition is. I think to ourselves a cuore, which has been a cuore for years, is to reflect on a simplification that is made on the concept of identity in the era contemporary, and to try to pay attention not more on the identity, but on the desire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, Fraser surrenders to Italy, only to find something that elevates him in the thing that in the thing in the person that has been most close to him for so long in Caitlin. She's been going through so much throughout the entire season, and finally coming, like it's all finally coming to a head where she's finally like realizing like who she wants to be and what she wants to be and where she stands with Frasier. They belong in their own worlds and Frasier has found the perfect person who belongs in his world as well and that's Caitlin and, 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 and she is in her own world like lost in life and Frasier comes and they're each other's savior I think. It's really pretty to see how they go from uh, such a wholesome, wholesome friendship to a caring, loving relationship and a big kiss. So I hope the audiences feel love. <laughs> I hope they feel confusion. I, I hope they feel restlessness. Uh, and eventually, I, I hope they understand all of the people that we describe. And I hope so that, as I said before, we leave, uh, we are, we are season one, with the desire of loving and being loved. <laughs>